Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi. And we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi, and I can see my prop is kind of blocking the corgi here. <laughs> I'll direct him another direction. Anyway, um, so today uh, there's been some questions on my sister's page, friends who like Judy Morgan, about harnesses and how to find a harness that's going to fit your dog and that's going to work. Now, I tried to answer a lot of the questions directly there, but I decided to do another Facebook Live, never too many, on the T-Touch harness and why I think it's the best harness for most dogs, like 99%. And, um, you know, when you're, I think the most important thing for people to understand when they're getting a harness is to educate themselves about how the harness fits their dog and how to know if the harness fits your dog. It's just like people with saddles and their horses. You know, you get six people telling you it fits and you get one person like me who comes and says, no, it doesn't fit. And there's a reason why that is. People don't know how to check properly. And T-Touch people are trained and we have seen so much from our bodywork work of things that went wrong with saddles, with harnesses, with um, inappropriate equipment, you know, with bad shoeing, bad trimming, uh, you know, everything that can create an imbalance in an animal's body. Those are the people that come to us because imbalances in the body can create um, also behavior problems as well. And so people all come to T-Touch either for body work or a behavior problem. It could be either. So today we're going to talk about the T-Touch harness. So I'll show you on the stuffed dog. It's a basic H harness comes across the top, it has a part that goes between the legs, and then a bit around the neck and around the middle. And significantly, it comes with a leash that attaches at the top and at the front. This is ideal if your dog is pulling. You can give him really clear signals with each of these pieces to balance his body and stop. Okay, dogs that have been using leashes, like my mom had one of these, the easy, walk that just attaches in the front that was a terrible harness because it only attached in the front and the way they work is by pulling the dog off balance so he's not pulling forward you're knocking him down so for my mom schnauzer this created tremendous numbers of chiropractic issues pain in her shoulders all kinds of stuff my mom was not aware of because when she put the harness on the dog she was still trying to run away from the pain of this and so she kept pulling, trying to get away and getting knocked off balance over and over. We put the dog, a big schnauzer with my tiny four foot 10 mom, in the raspberry, just like Jack's wearing, T-Touch harness. I showed her how, she's a rider, so it didn't take her too long, to use the two leashes, one in each hand, to get the dog more balanced. And the dog walked perfectly, so much so that the next day when she was walking the dog without me to help her, the neighbor thought she had gotten a new dog. The dog was acting so differently. So these harnesses are really, really, oh, you've got a thunder shirt for all the weather this weekend. Good idea, thunder shirts are good. And in fact, they were uh, manufactured and invented by someone inspired by the wraps we use in T-Touch. So T-Touch has been around a long time. We have worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of animals and we have learned a lot from these experiences and a lot with harnesses. So you've got these two points of attachment here so you can keep the dog in balance. One of the most important things about your uh, harnesses and your dogs is that a dog that's in physical balance is a dog that's in emotional balance. And think about that yourself. If you're trying to balance in the kitchen on one leg, um, for a really long time, more than you can do, what happens? You start to hold your breath, you start to panic, you start to go, oh, oh, you start to wave your arms. You are not emotionally balanced any longer. The same thing happens to a dog, like my mom's poor schnauzer being pulled off balance over and over. Same thing happens with gentle leaders. You're pulling their head out of alignment. All of this situation with the front end pulling um, can create tremendous numbers of issues in the cervical vertebrae and in the cranial nerves in the head, which of course go to our five senses. So then your dog has trouble seeing, 
smelling, tasting, and hearing because the head collar has been pulled incorrectly as well. So for dogs that really pull, one session with this type of harness can make a huge change. And I worked with a golden retriever puppy, she was like a year old, and she was going in her crate butt out so that they could not get her to go for walks because her prior harness was hurting her so much and she didn't have another way to explain to them that she did not want to go for a walk. Um, they were <laughs> skeptical, I met them in a parking lot in a car. <laughs> they were skeptical that I could even get the harness on a dog on that dog. But one of the great things about these harnesses is as you can see, there's a snap to undo it here, here, and you can stretch it out underneath. You can lengthen it on both sides, neck and back piece and the bottom piece. They're super adjustable. So I just undid everything, went in, petted the dog, dropped the harness over her back, did up one piece, did up the other piece and gave her some treats. And the person was amazed because she just didn't think she could get a harness on the dog. I took the dog around the parking lot two or three times, just getting her familiar to being in balance. She's wagging, she's happy. I showed the lady how to walk her with two hands. Great, okay, showed the lady how to walk her with one hand because at the end of this leash is a handle that you can hold the dog with um, instead of using two hands. And the dog has walked perfectly ever since. She is a huge advocate of this harness. She has told dozens of people in my area that she's met on dog walking trails about this harness because it literally saved her dog's life of being able to walk comfortably. I mean, these harnesses are a miracle. And, you know, a lot of people don't like the way they look because they are just this thin-ish, this is a small, so the um, larges are much wider, this piece of nylon. And they think that this harness, or something like this, this is a no brand because um, I don't want to diss other brands, but I want to show you why they don't work. So this no brand has the mesh on the top. And when you pull on it, if you put it on you and pull on it, this piece of tape that goes around the front, which feels squishy, it becomes like a tight noose around your dog's neck. Even though you think because it's mesh, it's pulling on the whole dog, it is not. It can really hurt dogs. I've seen a lot of dogs hurt by this. And people that use this kind of harness with a pulling dog thinking they're not hurting them, the other thing they've complained about is that this stretches out really fast and then the dog can wiggle out of it and you know they have to buy a new one and these are not that cheap. Some of the brands that they make that are mesh like this can be quite expensive. So that becomes a problem. Um, and then you think that you're pulling on the dog all underneath here, but you're not. Also, this is really attractive to silky type hair, like a Cavalier, a Spaniel, um, Golden Retriever, any kind of dog like that. Um, the hair gets caught in this mesh and it's really painful. And if you've got a dog like a golden with a lot of feathers under the armpit and it gets caught in this and your dog can't move his arm, he can't walk. And now he's got a hundred problems trying to tell you why he can't move his front leg and why he doesn't want to go for a walk. So avoid this type of harness. They look like they're going to be great, but they're not. This is really tight. Um, so, and here's Tristan. He is wearing his Tito harness. And the other thing you can see from him under my arm here is how much movement he has in his shoulder. There is no shoulder restriction. This whole leg all the way up to the scapula can move wherever it wants. And that's a critical thing with harnesses. Your dog's shoulder has to be able to move. Mm -hmm. A lot of the old kinds of harnesses cut right across the shoulder here and come straight back that way. This arm can't move. It's gonna put your dog out of balance. You're gonna create vertebral problems up in the thoracic and cervical vertebrae. You're gonna end up with a dog with a lot of problems. I mean, people on um, the Friends Who Like Judy Morgan page were all concerned about harness choking their dog, uh, which is good, you should be, <laughs> because a lot of them do. Um, and you know, the reason you get a harness is because you don't wanna choke your dog with a collar. But there's other things to keep in mind because you don't wanna throw your dog totally out of whack anywhere else in his body. So you want this shoulder to have plenty of room. Now this harness is not fitting this stuffed dog perfectly. Um, it normally wouldn't be back this far around his middle. It would be up about, you know, not in his armpit, but like here, up another inch. Um, and he probably needs a smaller size, but I just grabbed one of Tristan's and threw it on him because they're roughly similar. So the other thing people look for in a harness is the Y in the front, so it's not hitting the soft tissues of the neck. Now, my T-Touch harness could be adjusted on him so that I have it up higher, but if I tighten this bottom piece here, 
which is adjustable. I mean, these are super adjustable. The small all the way out is the same size as the medium all the way in. So they're great for growing dogs. Um, you can adjust this bottom piece so that you're, it's not putting any pressure on any of the soft tissues in the neck. And think about the difference between a dachshund and a basset hound and a dog with a bigger, longer neck like um, a greyhound. Very different structure. There is not gonna be very many harnesses that can fit a greyhound and a basset hound. But this one does because it's super adjustable underneath. So the other thing that's great about the two points of attachment, you can use a tiny signal to ask your dog what you want him to do. You don't have to yank on him. And it really, really helps stop pulling dogs. So that, and it works um, on every type of dog. I mean, I've never, I've never worked with a dog that was a puller and not had this harness stop the pulling within five minutes of me using it on him. Now, for somebody just buying one on the internet <laughs> from me today, um, they're gonna need a little education for it to work. So it might not take one session, it might take two. But we certainly have trained many people in T-Touch classes how to use this harness in you know less than an hour and their dogs are not pulling after that so you know if they do pull in this harness you can you know you've got a good handle on them which relaxes the person a lot of people with pulling dogs get very upset because he's you know out of control there he's going to get loose he's pulling them around um it seems like often a small small people without a lot of strength end up with like a basset hound that's yanking them down the road um, a big strong dog so this harness not only keeps your dog in balance, but it keeps you in balance. And if you can breathe and keep yourself from being in a panic, you are better able to manage your dog. So what we talk about in T-Touch is not controlling the dog, but influencing the dog. So if Jack starts to pull, and I'm on the side where the leash is coming to, whoa, we're wrapped around my books. Um, I can just give him a little signal on the front or the back. It depends on who's telling you how to do this, but either way, you can give him a little signal on one end and then a bigger signal on the other end and it brings him into balance. It's like when we're riding and we ask for a halt, we go, and, whoa, and it's the same with a dog. And stop, please. So you have a lot of ability to influence the dog. Now, if your dog is like mine and he no longer pulls, you can unhook this and the leash can be you can either double hook it here or you can hook it back on itself. And the baby corgi uses it this way a lot. Back to its handle here. So now you've got a leash that's attached at the back and the dog has quite a long space he can go. And you can also shorten up this long piece so that it's half this length. It, it literally adjusts itself so it can be shorter. And then of course you still have the flexibility of how you move the other a snap to attach it here or on the handle so that you have an infinite amount of adjustability which so for the baby corgi that i work with who's our friend arrow he's pulling because he likes to go and he likes to see people and he likes to see squirrels and he's very excited because he's young he's one year old and he just had a hard time with harnesses and people were giving him their old harnesses so he went through about 10 different kinds before I said something to him about getting a T-Touch harness. And we did, we got him a, a medium-sized T-Touch harness when he was big enough that that would fit him for the rest of his life. And, and they do last a long time. This one I have here, this royal blue one, I have used this on three different corgis that I've had. And look at it, other than needing a wash, it's in excellent condition. <laughs> um, so baby corgi, um, he can often walk him out where they normally walk on a really long leash like this because he likes, there's a lot of wildlife out now, bears are breeding in our area, skunks, you name it. So you want to have the dog on a leash, but if he's walking with me and he's really excited to be with Tristan, he can attach it in the front and on the back and have a little bit more ability to influence the dog. And, you know, if he's just uh, going for a walk in town where there's a lot of people and he wants to have the dog close to him, he can attach the leash at both ends. These harnesses come with the leash and the handle and he's amazed at actually how soft the inside of the handle is for the human and because it's made the way it is it's double stitched onto the soft piece so again it distributes any pressure around your whole hand so you're not just holding something thin like this like a regular leash would be where it's really pulling on your fingers. This is made really well. It supports itself so that the pressure is through your whole arm and hand and not just a little strip going over a couple fingers 
And also, because of the way it's made, if your dog is with this attached in the front and the top, and you know, he's a pulley dog, but he's okay. He's like this and you're walking. If he starts to go to the end of the leash, all you have to do is just do a little squeeze saying, come back to me. And it's just a little reminder. You don't have to yank him and pull him because of that kind of stiff softness that we get from this handle that you're able to translate a signal all the way down the leash. And in T-Touch, we try to give our dogs and our horses the smallest signal possible in order to ask them what we would like them to do. We don't wanna be yanking and pulling because that's exhausting for you and the animal and it's not clear. And that's why we use the equipment we use, all the bridles, all of the bitless bridles we have, everything we use, we try to use the things that you need to give the most clear small signal with. A lot of the <clears throat> harnesses don't fit dogs well and they're big and they're loose and you start to just give them a signal and the whole thing shifts sideways. That's not very helpful. That's another reason this harness is adjustable in every single one of the pieces, except the piece that comes across the top of the back here. That's the only one that you know is not adjustable, but every other one is. And <clears throat> if you, like I said, the small goes all the way up to, um, out to be the medium size. So if you need this to be longer, like Tristan, I could, I could get him into a medium size harness if I tightened it all the way, and this could be a bit longer. But this one fits him fine. So they come in extra small, small, medium, and large, and extra large. They come in every color. We have them in um, purple, this royal blue, the aqua blue that Tristan has on here, this raspberry, black, um, green, and red. So whatever color you like for your dog, you can get. I was kind of amazed, the lady with the golden retriever in the parking lot, she really wanted a, a particular red one. And there was a time when they were coming in sort of an orangey red color, um, as opposed to like a darker, deeper red. And that's the one she wanted. She ordered it special for the dog. And I thought, dog, this color with that color leash? Oh, I don't know, red's grounding. But she knew the dog and knew what color would work. And boy, that dog loved that color. Um, and it really brought out her red highlights in her coat. So, and the baby Corgi, who's a sable, so he's this color with black hair in him. He has a black leash and harness and it really brings out his color. He's super handsome in it. So depending on what color you like and what color might look good on your dog, we do have a variety of colors. Um, and like I said, the dog has lots of freedom of movement in his shoulder and his back and I don't ever see an injured dog that's been walked in a T-Touch harness. And as a physical therapist for pets, I can tell you I have seen every kind of problem in a dog created by harnesses. Problems in the low back, laryngeal paralysis from pulling on the neck, um, all kinds of problems with the vertebrae and the neck and the shoulders from harnesses and, and head collars, pulling them sideways. Um, you know, it's just, it's so important to have a good harness and people don't know how to find one. I mean, that's why the question came up on Friends Who Like Judy Morgan. That's why the question comes up at every expo I go to and my harness talks are very popular. And, you know, sometimes it's hard for the expo producer to keep having a talk about harnesses by the same person. But, you know, I sell these T-Touch harnesses, but I don't make more than like two bucks a harness. So I'm selling them because I know that they help your dog and they help you. I'm not selling them because I'm making a million dollars. And so the expo person is always like, well, if you're only talking about your harness and what about the millions of people that are selling harnesses? So there's a couple of other kinds of harness that work that I talk about. One is just a regular old cheap step-in harness that you put, it's like figure eight harness as opposed to an H. The dog steps in his front legs and it snaps on the top. I recommend these a lot for puppies because they're hard to get out of and the dog is growing a lot really fast. And these T-Touch harnesses can run you at 50, 60 bucks with the harness and the handle. And if your dog's gonna grow out of it really fast, maybe you only wanna get one and wait till he's bigger like the baby Corgi did. So the figure eight harnesses work well. And there are plenty of um, step-in harnesses that that's all you need if your dog doesn't pull. And they come in really cute designs and things. There's a store on the Cape that sells them and they have a million other kinds of harnesses made out of this mesh stuff for twice the price. Um, and I've helped a lot of dogs that go in that store pulling and their person's looking in the harnesses. The lady in the store owner, she's been very nice to me and you know, when COVID doesn't happen, maybe she'll let me do a harness talk there about the ones she really does sell. 
but I have helped her sell a lot of these really cute ones that are sort of an age, but they're a step in and they fit dogs that don't pull and they have lobsters on them and whales and seahorses. And so people can remember their Cape vacation and the dogs walk great in them. So those can be good. And my sister um, talked to me about Sophie's Choice, who I met at the expo, a lady named, or she named the company after her dog, Sophie. She hand sews harnesses that have like a little ruffle here for like the girl dogs. And they're only for little small dogs, like a Chihuahua or a Cavalier or a little Poodle. They're really cute. Again, they come in cute colors. Um, and she and I had a chat and she's adapted the harnesses a teeny bit since she talked to me. She's made them a little differently. And they're really good for small dogs that don't pull. They don't impinge on the neck or the shoulders or anything. And she has an online uh, store where you can buy uh, these little Sophie's Choice harnesses as well. So if you've got like a little lap dog and he's not a puller and you're not going out much, uh, they're great. And I have had people buy these harnesses for Yorkies. They come in an extra small. I had a lady with two Yorkies, teeny weeny little cuties in a, in a carriage. I had no idea they were pullers. Part of why they were in the carriage is because they pull. And a lot of people don't train these little small dogs how to walk well on leashes because they just pick them up and carry them places. <laughs> so she bought two teeny little purple harnesses and leash sets for them. And she has been very happy that now she can take them out and about. So, you know, and you can adjust these harnesses so much that it makes them really good. Like this one right now, um, I Tristan hasn't worn this one lately and I can see that it's a little close to his armpit here. So because I can adjust both sides, I can take it up a little so the snap is no longer in his armpit. You can't do that with a lot of these other harnesses and people, um, I think it's the Pug Life one that people have had a lot of trouble because it does come under the dog's armpit. Think about the long-term effects of that heart snap being right in your armpit. It's gonna make you walk like this with your toes pointing in to get up some freedom around that snap so it's not digging in. That's, you know, my dog's hairy, but if I had a dachshund or somebody with like flat hair, that would be really uncomfortable. So they start to walk pigeon-toed and that's gonna interfere with how they carry their body. Their back is either gonna go down or up depending on how they're trying to protect it. And you're gonna end up with these physical problems and not many people realize that it's coming from the harness from the snap right here being right in the dog's armpit. So, and you can put fuzz on it, you can wrap it in vet wrap and do all that stuff. It does not help because the problem is not just that it's hard plastic, but it's the bulkiness of it that interferes with the shoulder's movement. So you want your dog's shoulders to move. That's why this H harness gives the whole scapula full range of motion. So if you have more questions about Tellington T-Touch harnesses, what's my website? SallyMorganPT.com. That's physical therapist, PT. Um, and you can get these harnesses there and I will post some more pictures of them. I, somewhere I have a picture of all the colors laid out um, so you can see which ones you like. Um, and depending on your breed of dog and how big he is, you know, not all corgis are the same size. Mostly they're mediums. This kid's a small. Shelties, same thing. Mostly they're mediums. Occasionally there's a small, but they have so much coat on them that sometimes a medium fits them better anyway. If you've got a dog like a Sheltie with a big coat, you really want to make sure the harness fits correctly because you don't want to pull on the hair. And then that can be really irritating. We have seen this with horses so much with something catching on the mane or the hair under the saddle and it makes them crazy. Just like if somebody were pulling my hair right now, I wouldn't be able to concentrate or do anything. So we like to have the hair free on the dog. And remember, the hair is a direct extension of the central nervous system tissue in utero. So you are making a direct issue in your dog's central nervous system when the hairs are getting caught in your Velcro mesh harness on your silky breeds. So if you have more questions, you can ask them here. I'm gonna post this in Friends Who Like Judy Morgan. If you have more questions, you can ask me there. Um, you know, and don't assume that the harness you have is terrible. Um, there is always the possibility that a harness you have may be adequate for your dog, just like with horse saddles. You know, it may fit well enough if your dog doesn't pull that he's doing okay. But a lot of these harnesses that are super popular right now, some recommended by vets and other trainers, they are really squishing dog shoulders. For years, the T-Touch people, before we had our own harness, we were using um, the Freedom Harness, which was a great harness but they started to make it so that it comes really low on the shoulder, right across down here. 
and you can see what that's going to do. Jack's not going to be able to take a step with this leg because his harness is here. So um, that's what prompted us to figure out a better way to make a harness. And it's not rocket science. You know, you just need a couple straps on the dog and something like the middle piece that's sturdy so that it distributes the pressure everywhere and that the shoulder's free and the neck is free. I mean, that's not that hard to make a harness fit that way. But, you know, so much of our cultural history of dog training and horse training is like controlling by strangling, controlling by squeezing. And so the idea of controlling by, you know, or influencing the dog by keeping him in balance so that he can do what you're asking him, that is so hard for people to get on board with, especially when you're older like me, you know, I, I lived through all those years of the trainers that just screamed at the dog, sit, or in German, even worse, <laughs> and never thank you, never a reward. You know, thank God the clicker people got on board with the rewards, and you know, now, and thanks to T-Touch for me 30 years ago, I've learned how to ask my dog nicely, I'd like you to sit now, please, and give him a treat when he sits. Right, Biscuit? He says, yes, the treats are important. And my dogs have been far better since then. So, you know, all they want to do is understand what we're trying to tell them. And if you've got a harness that's creating, you know, Morse code and, and squiggles and blips and, and static between you and your signal, your dog is helpless to figure out what you're asking him to do. So it's really important to have a harness that fits correctly where you can just do a little like, come back please, and the dog will respond. So that's my talk about harnesses for today. I have to run off to the dentist and some other places. Um, tomorrow I will be at my educator job, so I will not be doing Facebook Live, but I think on Thursday, yes, we will be doing it on Thursday. So thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day. Send me your harness questions and pictures of your dogs in harnesses and I can help you. Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day and enjoy a walk with your dog.